Hi, it's Kevin from Let Me Tech You, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the Terraform's lifecycle meta arguments. Now, when you're working with Terraform and you're working with uh, critical resources, there's going to be times where you might make some changes in Terraform or in the uh, cloud platform that you're um, creating infrastructure as code for, and you don't want those either to be destroyed, changed, um, you know, or accidentally destroyed or changed um, just because of some other changes that were uh, created accidentally. So what Terraform has in place are meta um, life cycles, um, I guess you could say life cycle um, meta arguments that you can put in place on your resources to mitigate some of these uh, potential catastrophic events that can occur. So what I'm going to do here is just something real simple. So resource groups in Azure are kind of ways to um, combine resources in a um, lifecycle group. So, you know, if you have VMs and uh, other types of load balancers, whatever, they can sit inside a resource group and they all belong to that resource group. But what you could do is say delete the resource group, delete everything that's in there, but you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do here is kind of go through three things. You can do a create um, before delete or destroy, a prevent destroy, or ignore changes. So the first thing we're going to test out here is a create before destroy. So let's say we have a resource group here and we don't want to delete this first before we create the other one. Um, say there could be VMs in there that just need to change um, or be moved over, migrated before this gets destroyed. So to use this particular um, feature in Terraform, you're going to create a lifecycle block inside the resource group that we're protecting. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a create before destroy. And as you can see, it's a Boolean, so it's going to be either true or false. So true, we're going to put this as true. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to run this and you know what, we're going to actually, so we're only going to need to work with one of these. So let's take, not worry about the other two there. So we'll work with this one. So let's say now we're going to go ahead and run our Terraform um, apply and auto approve. Uh, let's see, unsuitable value type. Create before destroy, let's. let's try that again here. Case sensitive, I'm guessing. So let's let this run and let's gonna we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a change to this particular resource group. And then we're gonna run our Terraform apply again. And what you're gonna see is gonna happen is the resource group that we're changing it to is going to be created and then they'll go ahead and destroy the existing one. So like, again, like that could just be for say you're, you know, um, it doesn't even have to be for, you know, a particular, uh, resource group. Say you you got a VM that's running and you want to provision a new VM inside of Terraform or, Maybe you got to update the uh, NIT card or something, something that can maybe um, create a destruction of a resource. But you need that other resource up before you want to bring this one down. That way there's no, like maybe too long of a gap in the actual uh, um, network being down, things like that. So as you can see, this is being added. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the name of this resource group. So a, group, uh, a name change will actually create a destruction. So if we were to do a Terraform plan, you would see that it would say destroy. And let's actually go to a Terraform apply without the auto approve. And I'm gonna show you. So the apply is gonna make me do the yes. And this um, seems like it's a little slow, but what's happening is I'm actually using Terraform um, or Azure's storage account to um, hold my host file 
or my state file. That way it can be backed up in the cloud, things like that. Also have a video on how to do that. That way you don't have to keep it local to your machine. And that way if you, you, know, you lose your state file, you don't have to try to re-import all of your resources and stuff like that. So once the supply goes through here, we should see what it's going to actually do here. And Okay, so as we scroll up, we see here it says Terraform used the selected providers to generate the following execution plan. Resource actions are indicated with the following symbols, create, replacement, and then destroy. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes, and we see we're going to get this. This forces replacement. And then inside the uh, text here, that's going to scroll across the screen. We're going to see our creation first of the resource of the new resource group, and then the deletion of the uh, existing one. Now, sometimes if you're in um, Azure and you try to go in and refresh your screen, uh, move that up. You try to refresh your screen, you're going to probably not see the um, the, so there's some caching that might go in to where you won't be able to see the newest one that's created, but it's there. So as you can see, creating, creation complete. Now and now we're getting we're going through the destruction phase. So that's just there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to instead of using this create before destroy, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the prevent destroy. So this is an example of, you know, you have a resource that you don't want deleted and you need it to be, um, you know, you don't want to have someone accidentally change something or maybe another resource that gets changed that's referencing something in this or that's it's this is reference referencing something in another resource. If it gets changed, you don't want this to delete it. So you want it to almost be like a fail safe. So what we could do is. We'll take this one out and we'll do a prevent. Now let's go ahead and take that out. So let's do prevent destroy true. Save that. Now if I come in and I try to like say change this, save it. And we're just gonna do an auto approve. So you can see here we have now that the instance cannot be destroyed. So that's a easy way to kind of go. So you you know we'll just go back in and save that, put it back the way it was, and then now, um, basically, if you want to, you know, change this, you will have to remove this lifecycle policy, then run whatever changes you need. So nice little way to kind of prevent any um, catastrophic changes from happening in the environment, especially if uh, you got multiple people working within the same code, things like that. So another thing we can, you know, look into is what's called ignore changes. Now, this might be something specific, uh, like say, like tags, for instance. Let's say something changes locally in the code or, um, Let's say up in the in the uh, Azure cloud, we got we got tags that we add all the time for various different um, reasons or tags that get removed. But you know what? We don't want it to affect, um, you know, a, a change that this instance makes. Or it could be like, say, a subnet. Let's say you create a subnet and, you know, that if it gets changed up in the uh, um, cloud, you don't want that resource to specifically annihilate any changes or revert back your changes in the cloud. You just, you want to ignore the changes that are created basically. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go and do another life cycle. Well, actually I'm going to put in a tag first. So my tag, and then it's actually, and then so it's going to be name, and I'm just going to do Kevin test save that and then we're going to auto approve that setup so now that we got that we're going to we got that um going to apply here in a sec we're going to add this lifecycle policy to this and in there we're going to do a ignore 
underscore changes and second here. Let's put this up here. And so it's so the life cycle and then ignore underscore changes. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's get this out of here. So ignore changes equal. And then what this takes is, um, you know, it could be a list, just basically a list of arguments. So what we want to ignore is tags. If anything gets changed in tags, we don't care about it. So we're going to just put tags here. And now we're going to save that. So now typically, if we were to go in and change something in um, the cloud, let's actually take this out for a second, just to show what it would do. Uh, let's actually take the entire lifecycle block out. I'm gonna save that, and this keeps popping up, so it's okay. So now, close this out, too much stuff up. Close all, yeah, there we go. Let's close out some of this. Okay, so if we go into our test 2022, go on the tags, and you can see I got the Kevin test. But if I go in and save this and apply that change, it's gonna now have separate, uh, so the state file is not gonna match up with what's in the cloud there. So if I do another Terraform apply, auto approve, it should see that the change up there doesn't match with what I have. And then it should go ahead and update that again to be correct. So as you can see, it detected a change. Kevin is now going back to Kevin test. But sometimes you might have tags that might need change for different life cycle policy reasons or different other um other variations of um, resources or software that you're, you know, you just, your environment just changes. So maybe, you know, you just don't care for tags being modified in the cloud or them matching up with what you have. So now if I put this policy back in here, that says ignore changes. So if we go back to, and I keep bringing that up. If we go back into the cloud here, and we do a refresh. We should see that this says Kevin test again. But now if I go Kevin test, and, or just Kevin and save that, and we come back in here, we run another Terraform apply auto approve. We shouldn't get any change now that comes through the pipeline here. So as you can see, um, your infrastructure matches the configuration nothing's changed because it's ignoring the changes that I make from um, the tags here or up in the cloud. So that's it there. Um, just three simple ways to kind of help mitigate uh, changes or, or catastrophic events, you know, in your environment, uh, protect some of your resources locally. Again, um, you know, there's always safeguards as far as doing things as far as in the uh, cloud using things like GitHub, repos, peer reviewers, stuff like that. So this is just an extra layer of protection there. Again, you know, if you have any questions in regards to any of the things in the uh, video today, please drop a comment down below. Um, appreciate any, all our subscribers who um, can subscribe, share the video. Give me any feedback that you may have. And again, check out my blog, letmetechyou.com. It'll be down there in the description down below. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.